So that's what I'm saying. The text is like an object. It's going to change perspective based on where you're standing. I don't know. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I missed you, baby sweet. It was a day. Hmm. It was a day. Please tell me you're seeing this too. From Seattle, we are drinking the movies. I'm Taylor Baker. And I'm Michael Clausen. Oh, hey. Oh, hi. How you doing today, Taylor? Well, now that I've tasted this delicious summer beer, I think it's an mm. amber ale from Hellbent, I'm doing much better. How about you? It's a beautiful sunny day. The beer fits nicely with the weather. We got some good movies to talk about. It's a good day. It is. It's also a sad day, I just realized, because we might not be having some winter ales for another six months. I know. It's huh. true. It's weird how that just happens all of a sudden. There's summer and spring ales at the brewery. No more winter. No more. Time to move on. No more getting all spruced up. That's right. Time for lighter beers. Lighter beers and... Um, Fruitier notes. Yeah, maybe some cider will be coming Ooh, once we get to the summer. that'd be a nice change of pace. I like that. So we're going to do some first impressions here. We got uh, Buñuel, short, or not short film, cartoon, called Buñuel in the Labyrinth of the Turtles? That is yeah. a mouthful. Buñuel in the Labyrinth of the Turtles. I will not ever remember the full title of this, probably. Is the labyrinth itself made of turtles? One what do you think this could means? Only hurt, well, it's probably a reference to the idea of turtles all the way down, which is mm. something that Stephen King mm. uses in his tales. It's an old folk tale, though, that I think is actually Spanish or uh, Aboriginal uh, South American, and its origination is a story. So it's an old folk tale. Got I it. think that's what it's making an allusion to, and then we all know what the labyrinth is. Mm. Let's take a peek. Si estas navidades nos toca la lotería, te pago el documental ese. Eso sí que sería surrealista. Je vous assure, votre sainteté, que Luis Buñuel ne mettra plus en scène à Paris. Right, we just watched the trailer for Boonwell in the Labyrinth of the Turtles. Yeah, is that correct? I think so, mostly. I think that's close. What do you think? I'm intrigued. I think I'm gonna like this cartoon for sure. I don't know if it's necessarily a G-rated cartoon. Mm. I, I don't know if it's intended for kids because they are showing some of Boonwell's actual films within the context of the cartoon, mm -hmm. which I think is, like, awesome and, and artistic and, like, a, a great um, flourish to to build around. Mm -hmm. But I, I do question just how wide a release this will get and and things to that nature. What about you? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the, the audience for it might be kind of narrow. Um, I don't know that Boonwell is even a household name, necessarily. Um, uh, this might um, go a long way towards making him one. Yeah, absolutely. I think the animation looks great. Live action inserts look great. Um, I had to personally don't know that much about Boonwell's background. I mean, I think I kind of look. It looks a little biopicish, and I wouldn't mind just hearing his story. Um, I agree. Narratively, it looks pretty straightforward. Um, no complaints there. I think. Uh, I think it looks pleasant. Yeah, I. It's like we'll sit down and learn something about Buñuel, and it'll yeah. be a great excuse to maybe watch three Buñuel classics. Definitely. Uh, then, you know, that see, sounds lovely. see what we can see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm definitely intrigued by the idea of a friend winning the lottery, and that is why he made a film, perhaps. I don't know yeah. if that's actually true or if that's the, perhaps, idea for the narrative that built this. I, I, I don't know anything. So. Yeah, I have no idea either I, I don't really know his story um except that he's just known for uh his surrealism if they can you know bring that into their movie themselves that would be cool in 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 tribute to his style um it does look a little kind of straightforward but you know i'll uh, hold out hope that they might do something a little creative in that sense yeah Who knows? yeah i think that it definitely we saw some dolly-esque elephants near the end yeah. so i think we might have some fun flourishes most definitely Good pick. 
And I imagine we'll definitely actually see this one. Of course. <laughs> Unlike many trailers we've watched recently. Correct. Um, <clears throat> now we're going to do Birds of Passage, which is a foreign film uh, that you recommended. And as always, it is a foreign film that is scored over 90% on Rotten Tomatoes that Michael's recommended. So we'll probably be watching this one too. Let's, Let's check take out a look. the trailer. I'm always for Viper. That's your Birds of Passage, Michael. What do you think? I'm pretty excited for this movie. Uh, did you see this director's movie, Embrace of the Serpent? It sounds like you did. I haven't. Oh, I've you been haven't. meaning okay. to watch it for what's the equivalent of basically forever. <laughs> Got it. Yes. I very much liked that one. That one is in black and white, uh, at least in part. Um, and it's like a little bit more in the adventure kind of genre about these like two different timelines of guys venturing into the rainforest to look for some potent um, strain of plant or something like that, mm -hmm. a drug essentially. And things get psychedelic to, to, to say the least. Um, so his interest, uh, with uh, drugs continues, and this looks far more epic in scale. Um, and I, th I think it looks awesome. Um, what about you? Uh, just, I guess, a question. Was Embrace of the Serpent also with a this co-director? Uh, that I don't remember. I okay. don't think so. I don't remember seeing two names on uh, that title. Because this know. one does have a co-director. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess the other question would be, did Embrace of the Serpent have realism and surrealism in it? Um, yeah. Other than the psychedelic trips, like, did it use oh. that imagery that I, I don't know about you, but I just saw in that trailer, you know, like the um, government looking building out in the middle of essentially mm. nowhere, um, the clothing in front of the faces. Uh, there's a lot of surreal imagery that I would say reminds me of, um, shoot, what's his name? Uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky. Mm, yeah yeah i would say that, i mean there's always a logic to what you know he's doing aside from those psychedelic kind of trips mm -hmm. um i don't you know he i don't think he's one to um you know create a striking shot just for the sake of doing it it's always kind of tied into the drama of the story yeah um, I, I definitely would say that it looks like it's tied into the drama but yeah. it, it's more surreal than we would get like cold war did not use mm. those surreal flourishes you know what's the uh, foreign film that won Roma did not use mm -hmm. these surrealist fl flourishes. It was very much embedded in realism, yeah. and I think mo like Capernaum is a is mm. you know mostly a, a realistic film. Definitely. Did yeah. you get the sense that this is using some of those surrealist um, tendencies? Yeah, okay. yeah, I think so. I mean, I, so I just, it's not just me. Like, no, no, no. Oh, I, yeah, I guess I just would have used a different <laughs> word. Like when I think of surrealism, sometimes I think about like it. So, there's sort of being a, a defiance of logic or something like that. Sure. Um, well, but, what uh, would you do if you had, if you were facing an enemy? Would you put clothing in front of your face and walk toward them? <laughs> well, I guess I assumed there was like a cultural significance at play or something like that. Yeah, there might be. Yeah. There, there might be. But the images yeah. are just, to me, the, that's the first yeah. word that I thought of was striking. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, it's definitely not what we would get from an American take on, uh, you know, a drug trafficking movie, right? Right. It, this is not. Uh, Sicario, exactly. Or, or Narcos. I like Sicario. Or, um, shoot, what is the Cormac McCarthy book uh, mm. that was adapted as a Joel and Ethan Cohen film? No Country for Old Men, there it gotcha. is. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasn't Savages a drug movie? What am I thinking of? Savages is a drug movie. Okay. Yeah, but no, way that, off, that's but an Oliver Stone I, was, I couldn't decide why that came to mind. There, yeah. There's a, a scene where there's... Um, where a car pulls up in the night, turns its headlights on, and a guy gets out of the car and walks up, and there's all these dead bodies on the ground mm. wearing cowboy boots with AKs. And it's, like, mm. straight out of that No Country for Old Men opening. Oh, yeah. To me, at least. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. That one's playing at uh, the Grand Illusion and SIF, so cool to see that getting uh, awesome. a release. So yeah. it's going to be... It, they said it released in February. When are we getting it? In a month, I want to say. In a month? Awesome. Yeah, sometime pretty soon. Another film we'll actually be watching for the show. It's Word. Good. These for, are some good first impressions. So we are going to talk about fighting with my family. That's right. 
Sorry about that. It's The Rock. We're huge fans. Thank you so much. What advice would you give us? We want to be the next you. What are your names again? My name. It doesn't matter what your names are. You walk around here interrupting The Rock you like you haven't seen the sun in 20 years. You like you just stepped out of Oliver Twist. Please, sir. May I have some more advice, sir? You want some advice? Here's The Rock's advice. Shut your mouth. Fighting with my family. Starring Great. Stephen Merchant, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and a small actress who's not doing any notable roles in any Greta Gerwig films or working with any uh, blossoming directors uh, by the name of Florence Pugh. Certainly a no-name at this point. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Merchant was the dad of yes. the girlfriend? dad of the... Yeah. Uh, I don't know if she's the girlfriend at the end, but uh, yes, the the dad of the baby mama, if you will. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think he was in the British office, right? I think that's yes, probably he was the, in the only British place office. I've seen him in um, an acting capacity. Have you seen him in... Did you ever watch the film Logan? Oh, I did. He was in Logan? I did yes, not realize that. He, okay. he is the... Um, shoot, what is his name? Can't remember the name of him as a mutant. But he is oh. the, the only other character besides Patrick Stewart. Ah, that would probably click character. if I went back to it now. Got it. Fighting with my family. You liked it? I really, really enjoyed this movie. Out of all Boom. the movies we watched for this episode, this was my favorite. There you I go. I gave it a, about a solid 76, you know? Just solid. above that 74. So it, Ooh, okay. it just bumped barely... into that four star with the heart. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I was just attached to the family, actually. Yeah. Like, I, I was as invested in the brother, whose name I'm forgetting... But uh, hmm. Zach Zodiac, character wise, Z- yes, yes, Zach Zodiac <laughs> is the character. Dude. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it just it straddled everything. I don't know. What did you think? About yeah, it? I'm just gonna. Um, I thought Zach Zodiac was fantastic. I think he was the most interesting character for me. I I think as much as I love Florence Pugh, I think he was also my favorite performer here. Um, you know, I think this is partly a movie about pursuing your dreams in a broad sense, and. Um, she pursues hers, but I think it's even more affecting for me to watch his kind of get crushed and mm-hmm. to have to kind of reimagine a new path for himself. Yes. I, I thought he was just great in that role. I really believed how devastated he was. Um, and Florence Pugh is great. Um, I personally don't know that I ever really was buying into her passion for, um, wrestling like I did his, um, but um you know she 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 is a talent there's no doubt um and you know i think the broad strokes of this movie were, like are are really going the right direction for me it's more just just kind of details that i would kind of get hung up on that kind of held it back for greatness for me but um it's kind of hard to resist at the same time because its heart is kind of in the right place yeah i would say that steven merchant as a director is not up to things that I would normally categorize as something that Michael would be mm. up to enjoying or seek out. He's more of a performer's director from what I can pick up on. He definitely situates the camera and lets each scene breathe with a focus on the performers in the frame, not mm. with an idea of trying to make the picture into something more artistic, I would say. Yeah. And I mean that both as a criticism and a compliment to him. Yeah, for sure. I don't think there's any shot or takes here that really draw attention to themselves. He's kind of like, he kind of wants to kind of remain invisible, right? And kind of hand the um, the feeling over to the story, less so the form. Um, and I think that's probably the right move. I mean, that's what this is about. This is about the content itself. This isn't some formally daring work. Um but, you know, there were things that I just didn't care for. I didn't care about, uh, I didn't care for Vince Vaughn, particularly. Oh, I love Vince Vaughn. Did you? I love I, him. Generally speaking, I do. I am a Vince Vaughn fan. Um, I did not care for him much here. I didn't feel like he was really... Even with the backstory. I did not buy that backstory for a second. Okay. I don't know. I could not picture him really being with guys like The Rock. I, I mean, I, there's no way I could buy his character throwing himself off a 30-foot ladder. I, I, I didn't buy that for a second. Well, have you seen Brawl and Cell Block 99? Oh, have I? That is a great movie. Well, if you've seen that and you don't think that he can do that, then that's your own issue. 
Fair enough. I just, I, I wish I had seen maybe shades of that kind of intensity in that character. I don't know that I really could see this guy as having that dimension to him. So a, a question that might shed light on why you experienced it that way is when you watched this, did you see Florence Pugh or did you see her as the character she was playing? Uh, I think I saw the character for the Vin- most part. What about Vince Vaughn? Um, I mostly saw Vince Vaughn. I don't okay. think he makes much of an effort to disappear. I don't see... I, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that there was really much um, dimensionality or distinctiveness to that character. Like, he's kind of playing the drill sergeant type, and he gets some fantastic one-liners, especially in, like, one of those practice scenes where he's kind of hurling insults at him to get him to bounce yeah. back. Great stuff. Um, but I wish there had just been a little more color to that character. It just felt kind of bland to me. I, I think that what the movie does do is it leaves itself open to that experience, and I, I don't think that's a wrong experience to have. I just made an effort. I, I did make a conscious effort to, like, forget that he's Vince Vaughn mm. and just let him be the character. Like, that was something mm. I was telling myself to do while I was watching the movie so that I would let yeah. go of that hang-up because that mm. was a hang-up I was experiencing. Is I think that by having Dwayne, which is great and he's mm. awesome, you are introducing an actor that we know as himself. Mm-hmm. And what that does is it kind of strips away the fabricated world that we're trying to inhabit when we watch a film. Mm. So then the character that he's most attached to when he's introduced into the film is Vince Vaughn. Mm-hmm. And I think that maybe that strips away the ability to believe that Vince Vaughn is really Vince Vaughn. Mm. Uh, or Vince Vaughn's character rather yeah, than yeah. him as an actor. Whereas with Lena Hetty and um, Nick Frost, they are made up and have the opportunity to breathe in such a way that we never really question who they are because yeah. they are such great character actors and yeah. Vince Vaughn simply is not a character actor. He is very much like a Mel Gibson where he just brings what he brings to the role like Bruce Willis. Mm. And it's either going to work or it's not going to work. And I mm. did make a conscious effort to try to let it work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the parents have the the benefit of playing devout, passionate wrestling fans, right? Yes. Like there, there is color to their, to their costumes, to their demeanor. Um, like, I don't know why Vince Vaughn couldn't have had some of that. To, to reveal to me that that was in his history. Um, I would imagine shooting schedule, timelines, and budget. Honestly, that's what I was thinking when I was watching it. Like, whew, it must have been tough to book this stuff. Because the opening scene with Dwayne being introduced into the same frame as Vince, they are not mm. actually inhabiting the same set. Yeah, probably shot on separate yeah. days and times. And then yeah. it's, it does a pan swing of the camera, and you can tell that they did a digital blend. Because they weren't at the same location for mm. that shoot. And then yeah. later, you can't tell if they're at the same location for that shoot either. I, I have a feeling that The Rock's schedule didn't line up with Vince's. And that mm. maybe the fact that they weren't in the same place at the same time may might have affected exactly mm. how it came across to us. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, so he was, he was maybe one thing that detracted from it. Um, a little bit for me. Um, I mean, I mean, I did think the the comedy in a in a broad sense was was pretty effective for me. I was laughing throughout. My my screening was was a little dead. I'm sure I would have um, been even more in the zone watching it with a crowd, which I oh, think yeah. you did, right? I did. I went to the opening night screening, 7 p.m. Yeah. showing, and it was packed, and it was packed in a way that is very very rarely packed i'd say it Mm -hmm. was packed in the same way that bohemian rhapsody was packed which is with people that don't normally go to the theater Mm -hmm. reacting with a lot of enthusiasm at the screen which is not something that normal theater goers do you know like when you go watch blade runner 2049 Mm -hmm. with a, a group of passionate cinema fans on opening night no one cheers. We're all yeah. just there for Denny Villeneuve's ride. When we watch Dunkirk, no one's cheering. We're all there for Nolan's ride. Yeah. Um, but with fighting with my family, much like with Bohemian Rhapsody, intermittently there was just cheering when certain things would happen. And most of them were men. Most of them were dressed in black. Many of mm-hmm. them had chains attached to their wallets. I knew this because they would rattle when they would get up. And, you know, it was a, it was a screening crowd that I don't, 
think I've ever really experienced before. And I liked it. I genuinely yeah. liked being in a, a group of, of fellas and their girlfriends and wives, though not very many, mm -hmm. just cheering for stuff that happens that really made them happy. Like, I think the biggest cheer was when um, Zodiac Zach or mm. Zach Zodiac. However, I can't you... remember which one it is, but yeah. yeah. When he uh, goes through his, you know, hero's journey and finally gets back to running the family uh, gym and he drives up in the van and the deaf kid's there mm -hmm. and he gets up and walks towards the van. Like people started cheering and clapping. And then once that subsided, you could hear nostrils and eyes uh, handling the crying. Mm -hmm. And Going for the Kleenex. Yeah. I, I think as a performance piece, it's really special. And that crowd, I, I don't know. I'm... I think that Stephen Merchant brings something totally unique to directing, and I want a lot more of it. Yeah, yeah, I think that is 100% the right way to say this movie. I, I am jealous of that experience. There were literally two other people in my room, which was surprising, Ooh. to be honest. Where did you see um, it? At the uh, Seattle 10. Ah, uh, you? Yeah, I saw it at uh, Linwood. Got it. So and on opening you, night, you, you get so people were pumped. Yeah, but that's you know you get people from King County, Snohomish County, mm. people out in Mukilteo, people from yeah. every like you just you get a, a healthy mingle of wrestling fans. Yeah, yeah. The Seattle Ten is otherwise showing a lot of art house stuff. Y yeah, um, and I mean, I I don't think that the U District is known for its wrestling community. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, I think a Tacoma screener might have been a little bit better for you. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, yeah, and, you know, I think, uh, scene one of this movie, you know, is, uh, Paige and Zach fighting over the TV remote because mm -hmm. he wants to watch wrestling and she wants to watch Charmed, and mm -hmm. at first I thought to myself, you know, like, is this at all a mistake because this is kind of suggesting she doesn't want to watch wrestling? Like, is this confusing whether or not she, this is actually what she wants to do? And then I kind of thought, no, it's just that, like, there aren't any women here. You know, there's no one. She she wants to show that um, that it has people that look like her. And I think that's what or this movie her. can do. Yeah. 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 Um, I think, you know, those, you know, kind of broad themes are, are pretty hard to resist. Yeah. Did um, you know this is based on a real, uh, the correct term is diva? Not until after. I didn't either. Yeah. <laughs> we um, are not wrestling pros. We do yeah, not know much. Definitely not. No. Um, which was actually kind of nice to not have the... Actually, maybe it did. I'm just forgetting. I don't think it says based on a true story, right? Mm -mm. Yeah. I don't know. You know, sometimes you're thinking to yourself after you see that, you're like, did that really happen? I just took it all for granted. Yeah. I think, um, I think Stephen probably knew, like, if I do... I, I imagine I I like to think that he's just a normal guy like us, and like if you're gonna put mm -hmm. based on a true story, you better be damn close to it. And he yeah. probably knew he was gonna take a lot of liberties. Yeah. So yeah. I I think that might be why he might have avoided that. Yeah, you don't always um, stand to gain from putting that out there first. Yeah, exactly. Um. Yeah, I uh, would most definitely recommend it. Um, I for me it is um good it's just not great it's it's not great but what is great is how good it is like i'm it's, confused it's you know when you're really really cold maybe you just got done uh maybe you're halfway done with your ski day you're going mm. to the ski lodge and you just want some mac and cheese it was baked in the mm. oven with some maybe sourdough bread and like a like a hot chocolate Right, that's not great cuisine. That's not classy mm. cuisine. But what's great is how good you feel from having it. And I think it's like that. It's like that mac and cheese. Like it's just, it's a great version of good. Most definitely. This is where I wish I could have like a separate dimension on Letterbox where I could pick like the size of the heart, maybe. Yes. <laughs> I would just go bigger heart here. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. it, it is filled with so much heart and so so much a performance piece, not a film piece. Yeah. And I, I definitely want more from Stephen Merchant. There you go. Fighting with my family. Moving on. Oh, hey. You're up. I folded your pants for you. No way. No, did you hit that old what? I don't believe this. It's Monday the 18th again. Ah! Oh, happy death day to you. Oh, happy death day to you. Oh, thank you. 
and then we proceeded to kill our each other and the episode was never finished see you next week <laughs> what'd you think of this one um what did i think i thought that it was pleasant i genuinely enjoyed moments of it um but those moments were very brief and were specifically the montage of her dying continuously Mm. Um, you did like that montage yes i thought that was a great montage i Mm. i think that's when this series or a series like this is always going to be at its best depending on its budget that it can throw it at these you know hem together shots of different Mm. ways of dying yeah um but as far as the beginning and ending as much as i love (laughs) steve zizis i did Mm. not appreciate that i i just didn't like it who is that Steve Zizis plays the Dean of Students. Oh, got it. Yes, he was maybe one of my least favorite uh, members of the cast. Um, Not uh, performance-wise, but um, the scene with the sorority sister playing a blind woman. I did enjoy that scene. Oh, did you? That was was a little too goofy for me. Um, But, like, halfway through, I was like, okay, okay, I get it. But, like, when she comes in wearing the sunglasses, tapping that cane, you didn't go... Mm -hmm. Oh, it, I mean, it was the lightest of amusements for me. Just a um, Pillsbury Doughboy chuckle? Yes. It, yeah, it, it was a little frivolous. Um, and I think, you know, we get a couple extra characters here. The uh, fellow science geeks. Yeah, um, I didn't. Nothing for me. I mean, I'm really here for Jessica Roth. Everyone <laughs> else I can kind of take or leave. Jessica Roth, the story with her mom, the story with her dad, the uh, boyfriend, not boyfriend. Um, and then, I, I mean, I was still invested in the, uh, was it her roommate, um, who had killed her in the first one? Mm. I, I did like that change where it's like now she's mm. friends with her and like trying to navigate that headspace. Like that was actually interesting and grounding because she had to be a person who had to kill her roommate because her roommate was going to kill her. And now she's in a dimension where that's not true and trying to navigate the fact mm. that that's not true. Which is just an interesting idea that I was like on board for screenplay wise. I was like, okay, I see what you're doing. That's that's an interesting thing to put a character through. I appreciate mm. that, but it it just doesn't hold up. Like yeah. like when yeah. there's individual things that I appreciate, but then like when you take it on a whole, it just doesn't hold up. Yeah, and the only reason that I overall liked it is just Jessica Roth's ability to make it constantly have levity and just elevate something that would normally suck definitely i mean in a way i think she might be kind of the sole thing i do like here um to me it feels both a little more cartoonish relative to the original and also more sentimental and i think as each of those tones are heightened they just clash a little louder for me i don't think the sentimentality is woven into the genre strains very seamlessly like i i wish i could uh, feel more weight with those emotional beats but the, the stuff with their mom like it, to me it's just it's too obvious that this is the effort to attach like an emotional backbone to this genre piece I'm like there, yeah. there's really nothing for me to um, lean into here like the, the depiction of the mom I, I kind of appreciate the idea I think he's on the right track to try to make this a, a little more meaningful perhaps but I, I just didn't I didn't feel much I, I almost feel like it was stealing from the first one because mm. the first one actually and I mean that's what a sequel should do arguably mm. but in the first one I actually did care about the thing with her mom because that was coloring the way that she was interacting with her dad and every time they'd go or every time she'd repeatedly go meet her dad for that lunch on her birthday like actually over time in the first movie built up an emotional residence that was mm. earned Mm. And I, I like I brought that into this movie, and what they tried to do with it just diminished all of its value mm. by mm. the end of it. Yeah, I would agree. Um, in Act One, did you suspect that we would ultimately return to Jessica living the same day over and over again, or was there a, a part of you that thought we might just be sticking with the the buddy? That's when I was excited for the movie. Yes, was when we switched. Uh, no, I, I liked the idea of her being a side character 
in mm. the movie. Ah. I thought that that would be a legitimate way to come up with an original screenplay. Mm. If it was actually written around this other character and he mm. was stuck doing that. Like, it would have been a more yeah. enticing story. Yeah. Um, they might have used their best piece in the whole as a mm. side character, but that might have made the whole piece less bad instead yeah. of letting Jessica Roth be the best part in a bad thing. Yeah, I felt the exact same way. I was really kind of having mixed feelings, thinking, like, I don't really want Jessica Roth to have to share the spotlight. At the same time, at least this is a different kind of structure. Yes. Um, And then we kind of revert, and it kind of gets explained away with this kind of sci-fi premise with the science experiment, and I'm like, this feels like we've just returned to a little bit of a gimmick. Yeah, Um, it's kind of like boiled down primer ideas. Yeah, yeah. Um, But I do feel like I was sufficiently duped into thinking we were going to follow that character. And I, I did sort of enjoy being, um, having that rug pulled out from under me. And especially just because I liked her revelation at realizing she was about to live the same day. Yeah, her that facial, was probably my her facial expressions convincing me that this was happening to her. Yeah. Definitely sell it yes. as something that I wanted to, as something I'm glad I watched, I guess. Yeah. And that's where this movie's in that really weird space where it's, because she's such a talent, I end up being glad I watched this thing. Yeah. That otherwise, if you remove her, I would never have any interest in watching. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I would probably still up, still come to a third entry in the franchise. So long as she's there, if you took it out, I would not. Yeah, th- that's the weird thing is I, if she keeps doing these, <laughs> does her career go anywhere? Because I actually pulled up her... Um, IMDb page and she has a exorbitant amount of titles that she's been in mm. and I've only seen these two mm. and she was in a movie with Michael Shannon and I haven't seen it mm. what movie was that? it came out in 2015-2016 sounds okay uh, I like the sound of that it's got Michael Shannon's face on the cover it was kind of dark I, d- I don't remember what it was I mm. always meant to see it I just never did uh, mm. probably because I didn't hear enough good stuff about it or something but it's you know, if she keeps doing this, I I do question if there's a future for her career. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I would show up for it. I don't necessarily hope that that is a, her first choice. Yeah, yeah I, um, I really hope that she gets uh, a lifeline. Yeah, yeah. And I would love to see her uh, do more comic roles. I mean, I think she's got the comic touch. It's hilarious. Yes. It's, it's, it's just a blast to watch her. You um, put her across from Rachel McAdams in Game Night 2. You were selling uh, tickets, buddy. Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I need that movie. Bad. And add Michael Pena, please. Oh, yeah, your guy. <laughs> Crowd seemed to respond to this one? Uh, no. Yeah. No. It was, had... <laughs> it was mainly just snickering teenagers that were like, mm. this is stupid. Yeah, there was a large group of people that left halfway through Mm. um and then at the end i definitely remember hearing muffled people mainly women saying this was stupid and then their boyfriends agreeing with them yeah (laughs) yeah yeah i i was kind of surprised do you ever go to a movie like this and just feel like in a good way the audience has like maybe just never seen something like this so they're just kind of loving it people i had people that were just just laughing their heads off and i was like i am thrilled you're enjoying this as much as you are i was i was surprised that might um, like actually bother me because it <laughs> is not a good movie you're like whoa 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 turn it down everybody you, not that good you guys let me let me tell you a little story about rosebud okay <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go jump yeah. off of a clock tower yeah happy death day to you where's this I have a bag that I found that I think belongs to Greta Hedag. Oh, bless your heart. Where did you find it? On the subway. Oh, would you like a cup of coffee? You've been so kind. Did you find them? I guess she's been finding bags around the city. I was hoping someone brings them back to her. And you did. Oh my god, it's her. <laughs> Just try to get rid of Greta. And now my personal biggest letdown, mm. Greta. That's right. Isabelle Huppert, Chloe Grace Moretz, Michael Monroe, 
Um, it is our, our second Neil Jordan movie after... Um, Interview with the Vampire. That's right. You were bummed, huh? I Yeah, I thought that as a feature film, this is legitimately trash as a feature film. <sighs> Yikes. Because the story does not um, proceed in a way that builds the correct amount of tension by the end. Like, mm. I, I think that even Interview with the Vampire might have this problem, but it is so stylistically rich Mm. It, it made up for it and I think that there's a lot in Greta that is similar to Interview with the Vampire maybe yeah. um, as far as the great cinematography here it's Seamus McGarvey shooting and yeah. each scene looks sumptuous and great but as far as the storyline we spend too much time building up fear mm. and and then there it, it's just not it, it doesn't coalesce in any tangible way that feels earned by the end of it, I mm. thought. Yeah, I had more fun with it. Um, I uh, just had a blast watching Isabel Huppert play this role. Agreed. That's um, where we agree. She yeah. is fantastic. It is amazing. She should be a serial killer until she dies. Every movie. Yes, yes. please. Um, Jack this, the yeah. Isabel Huppert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think the screenplay or the story itself was just, like, very ambitious, but to me it was just, like, kind of simple enough for me to go with as just, you know, a psychopathic stalker movie. Um, I didn't feel the movie taking itself too seriously. I definitely was laughing at times, and I felt like the, the movie was aware that it was a little humorous without being too, you know, self-aware or, like, self-referential. Um, but, you know, Isabelle Huppert as this, um, alluring French woman who's making risotto and listening to classical music. And, and actually Hungarian. Yes. And, um, then leaning into this, uh, devilishness, um, was just, uh, was just a blast for me. I, I don't, I didn't feel like it was really trying to be anything better than what it was so it's kind of impossible for it to ever be more than like a three or maybe even a three and a half um but it was easy for me to just kind of go with it because i just had fun watching her do her thing you just had a harder time with the story as much as i love that it foreshadowed the whole fucking movie in like the first 20 minutes man i would agree (laughs) <laughs> right? Like, like, did anyone really not hear the fucking banging in the beginning? The Yeah. The first time Chloe Grace Moretz is there, and then she goes and sits over at the piano and starts playing, and it's yeah. clear that there's a fucking room behind the goddamn piano, and we all know that we're gonna go there, and then we have to wait an hour to go there. It, I don't, I just hate the formula when it's that yeah. open. Like, it, it's just too easy to see where we're going and yeah. that's i just can't forgive a screenplay that poorly telegraphed yeah that's fair i mean i it's weird i completely understand that experience for me i just felt the movie knowing that i already knew that there was a person behind that wall i i that that just played in a in somewhat of a humorous kind of way for me um Especially when Isabel so, Huppert so is, is it a... in kind of a performative mode. Um, it's it's kind of toying with our expectations without being too, you know, meta in, a, in, in any overway. When you way. watched it, was it a humorous film? Yeah, I was, I was okay. laughing. Because I, 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 did not, I did not experience the film in that manner. Right? Completely she, understand. She I think goes, I might be alone in this. She goes down the stairs, unzips... A living girl. Yes. Never brought up again. Uh, correct. I guess I, I guess I assumed it was just another victim. That is the girl that was behind the door when she first comes in. That she yeah. then proceeds to find the idea of before she cuts off Isabel's finger. Mm. And she goes down the basement stairs, unzips her, finds mm. her in there. And then yeah. is, is taken back upstairs. And then it's never addressed again. And then it just mm. ends. 
And I, I feel the movie like, ends? What do you mean? It, yeah, it just ends when they lock her in the box. Uh, and yeah, they never yeah. ad- address that issue. Ah, it, ah. So I feel like that it's, it just needs a, more passes. It needs mm. another mm. Ghost Rider. It, it needs someone fixing some logistical things. I don't mind introducing these extra emotional stakes. But you have to at least address them before the end. Like, at least admit that she was murdered. Show us a dead mm. body. Or or show us, um, you know, like uh, A Star is Born did with the, the flashing uh, police lights. Like, show mm. us police pulling up so that we can at least wonder. But mm. it doesn't really introduce anything to try to address any of the open threads that the screenplay leaves. Mm. And I, I think that mm. at bottom, all my problems are 100% mm. screenplay. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have too many problems with Chloe Grace Moretz in this film. I, the problems I have are like how her character was written. The mm. dialogue between her and Micah specifically mm. is just cringe. Like, nah, yeah, just that's all it is is cringe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is a uh, a moment pretty early on where Micah Monroe's character throws a pretty tough insult at her, saying like, you know, don't pretend you're not just using her as a surrogate mom. mom. Like that is a pretty tough blow and then chloe's like i'm gonna forget you said that and yeah. she just walks out the door like but then like two scenes later they're totally fine yeah it's, it's a little like ridiculous. that's not how girls talk to each other as far as yeah. i'm aware <laughs> yeah uh completely agree it is not exactly sound uh, in that sense um but but y- you are right when it is not about the actual interactions of real people and it's a mm-hmm. performance piece Oh, between yeah. Between Chloe Grace Moretz being terrified and Isabel Huppert being a crazed stalker, awesome murderer woman. Yeah. That is at its best. Yeah. Because Chloe yeah. can play scared and Isabel Huppert can play a demon woman really damn well. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of those movies where I've, it worked for me in spite of itself. Yes. Um, I would not hand it any awards, but. I don't think it's going to be up for any. I just needed to say that okay. <laughs> <laughs> i think i think that's safe to say you're greta right. wins the oscar <laughs> oh wow <laughs> greta the green book uh, yeah. um but <laughs> that would even be going down <laughs> yeah i i just had so much fun watching her watching her flip the table and then get loaded into an ambulance in in the gurney where she looks oh, yeah. just pouty and evil at the same time like it is no you are absolutely right when it's not it's her it's so good <laughs> she's so good but um yeah i would agree there i i didn't feel much of a sense of dread but even by the time chloe grace moretz was locked up i was even just like just stick with who bear she's she's fine back there um you know watching her play the piano dance around I, I mean it's partly just you know knowing who that actress is and the roles she usually plays she's so able to let loose a little bit mm-hmm. it's just fun um were you driven insane when she was put in the room and then she finally picks up the chair and throws it at the door and you're like okay you threw it at the door the chair started breaking on the window are planks of wood that are nailed in if you take the leg of the chair and use it as a lever, you can open that. Do you understand? Like, it's like no no writer sat down and went through what was logistically in this room and started planning out ways to get out and then trying mm. to refute those ways. They were mm. just like, no, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I, that did cross my mind when they finally do the reverse shot and you see the window. I'm like, it doesn't look that hard to get through. Well, do you through. remember when she started pulling on it? I guess I kind of forgot she's, that. She pulled on the individual boards that are nailed over. You're like, pull harder! <laughs> yeah. And then she's got a fucking dresser that she could be throwing at the door, number one. She could take the dresser, break it apart, use it as levers, use it as weapons. Like, yeah. she just... It was... It does not pass the eye test as <laughs> a screenplay. It's completely fair. I think I am probably too forgiving on it. I just, I just had fun with the things of you thought it was a comedy i cannot fault you for that (laughs) that is a unique experience that i cannot (laughs) criticize yeah um you know sometimes a movie for me can just work in a way that wasn't intended and i didn't feel myself laughing at it i just saw upair having fun with it 
and I, in turn, had fun watching her do that, despite these other things. That is um, the specific moments I enjoyed. So. Yeah. Yeah, if anything, I think it could have just been maybe crazier at the end. If it had just gone a little more wild, yeah, it might have like, just been more satisfying. Why didn't they light the fucking house on fire? Yeah, I don't know. Like, you, I Watch was it. really kind of thinking that after that finger gets chopped off, that we might kind of get somewhere a little more violent or grotesque. Yeah. Or at we least really didn't. funnier. Yeah, I don't like, know. Like if go she, a little, if someone would have like tried to shake her hand and like squeezed that pinky and been, and then like accidentally pulled the glove off, like I I don't mm. I feel like there were gags to be had. That all my criticism mm. is just this is not a good screenplay, <laughs> and I could go on infinitely complaining about random things that they could have done. Um, it's fair. Well, I guess one constructive thing that. I would pay to it as a compliment is uh, the undeserving winner of the fictional short film category for the Oscars skin mm. is a hem together version of scenes torn from the feature length film that is not yet released. Mm. Um, and I do think that with the, in the case of Greta, there is a really, really strong short film to be had through editing. Mm. Because that introduction scene, if you remove, as great as she is, if you remove the Micah Monroe element, mm. um, which does not really serve the uh, thriller narrative yeah. um, that you could argue this is going for, and you start with just a insert shot of Chloe getting the purse, then Chloe delivering it, yeah. and then Isabel Huppert going in front of the piano and, and playing... And then we just get the slow devolving relationship after that, you yeah. know, between 25 to 30 minutes, um, up to 40, you know, yeah. there's a really strong short film there um, oh, yeah. it, that has existed before. It's called like the mother's milk category where mm. um, mo mother's milk is this uh, idea of, you know, drugging someone to take care of them. Oh, and yeah. it's kind of uh, that gone wrong. And I, I, I do think that there's a, a really good short film to be had of like that going wrong in this film if you just cut it correctly. So I, I would say that like there is enough here to make a good work of art editing wise. Mm -hmm. I just don't like the written interpretation with the way that it coalesced. But once again, Seamus McGarvey's uh, cinematography was sumptuous. I would 100% agree. I think it's like an hour and 45 minutes. There is no need for it to be that long. As much as I like Uber watching her that long, it doesn't really, it's just not necessary. Yeah. 100% agree. All right. There we have it. That is Greta. And that's an episode. Run! Go! Get to the chopper! We have to go. I'm coming with you. That was brilliant.